I'm not a massive fan for huge Formula One motorhomes. I certainly believe that Formula One should be about noise and burning rubber and fuel and everything else. But I'm not sure that this sends a great message in the 21st century at this point, things like this, because is it really necessary? It may be necessary from a corporate point of view, they love to use that word, but I don't know. How many new companies come into Formula One purely because they have incredibly glamorous motorhomes, huge, huge motorhomes like this? Anyway, that's that. I mean, I, I would love to see a team somewhere along the line, maybe one of the F2 teams eventually when they are allowed to come into Formula One, do a sort of, you know, the, the other side of it all and do a pretty, pretty basic one, you know, sawdust on the floor, don't worry, be happy, sort of. Yeah, that sort of thing, right? It'd be quite good, wouldn't it? Anyway, that's not happening at the moment. Everybody's sort of fighting a battle of, of what to do best given your position on the grid and how quick your car is. And it's, it's you know, that you look at the motorhomes and it does basically tell you where everybody is. The only slight anomaly is Haas there between Red Bull, Toro Rosso, Ferrari and Mercedes. But anyway, that's good for them, if nothing else. Renault motorhome hasn't really changed, the double motorhome thing. As you'd expect, Pirelli have had that one for a while now. The McLaren one's uh, been there, done that. McLaren, of course, is a bit of a stir this race, actually, because for years they've been known for their amazing hospitality, food and drink and everything, and the British press particularly have made it their sort of base. But they put a press release out just before a week before this race saying that no longer are the press invited there to uh, partake of food and beverage. So I think they'll find probably a lot fewer people in their motorhome. I think that's what they want, actually. I can't imagine they're in any way upset by that. Uh, because corporate, corporate, corporate. Yeah, it's all corporate. Quite sure what that means, but anyway. So I'm going now into the, what is it? Sport Pisa, Pisa, Pisa Racing BWT motorhome, which is a new one. Whether it's re reclad or actually a new one, I don't know. I think it looks like a new one. They're doing a sort of function here. Force Canada. Cool. Here we go. Names there. I don't think my name will be there. I did actually tell young Will that I was coming, but uh, no, I didn't. So. I think I was supposed to reply to somebody very specific, which I didn't. I better sort this out. Hang on. Yeah, so actually, yeah, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Lots of nice pictures. So I think this, this tells a story, doesn't it? This is the new Force India. It's the new Force whatever. A lot more money being spent on all the things that matter. No, I'm not being facetious. Stop it, Peter. Stop it. As well. Um, my mate. I'd, I'd rather, you know, I, where I would rather be now, I'd rather be in the F2 paddock over there. Having uh, an early meal with the F2 drivers and the F3 drivers, and I love that about the uh, I love that about the F2 paddock. Sorry about the bouncing around there. That all the hospitality is under one roof, and you get to talk to all the drivers and everybody in one one thing. I'm not allowed to film in there at the moment, which is why I haven't taken the camera in there. But it may change. Who knows? Uh, so I think that's where I'm going to go. Yeah. Too much standing around. I, I'm, not, I'm not massively into standing around with a drink in my hand, chatting away. No. Pit lane, mechanics, whatever. Yeah, that's for me. But I like the, uh, you know, if this was my new house, I'd probably be quite happy with it. Sort of. Maybe. Oops. Well, there's Alan Permain just walking into the back of the Renault motorhome, one of the key players of the Renault Formula One team and its resurgence. It'll be interesting to see how they get on this weekend. The reliability hasn't been great, and they must be concerned about that engine wise. You have to ask, I think, the question, well, I don't think anyone would ever answer it, but I think the question has to be asked, um, 
there's Mike Pilbeam's son too, who's a very good engineer, been at Renault for quite a while now too, uh, about the engine situation at Renault. Because if they are to, to beat Ferrari and Mercedes, and presumably someone on the Renault board signing checks assumes that's what's going to happen at some point, in my view, it's always going to be difficult doing the engines in France, not necessarily from a technical standpoint or indeed logistics, but political. I think politically, it's quite difficult these days for Renault to spend a lot of money on home ground on something as obscure as Formula One engines. And if the whole engine situation at Renault was in England, as per Mercedes, then I think it might be an easier easier program for them. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I wonder whether Daniel Ricciardo thought about that before he went to Renault. Anyway, we'll see. Ferrari, of course, do build their engines on home soil, but it's very different for them in Italy. Very different situation for Ferrari in Italy than for Renault in France. Totally different. There's no comparison.